So I j- just going through uh, some of these, right? I mean, we we discussed uh, what made for interesting photos to us, like based on the things that we saw, right? We were trying to maybe get into the heads of um, the the individual photographers, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, I I just want to know how that plays out like for you, like what, yeah. what like, so just uh, random, right. Just like the first um, one that uh, I got here. Um, what, like, like, so what, what made you want to do this photo? What were you thinking in terms of framing? Why do you think this was uh, substantial enough and worthwhile to take a photo of, even if it's just like a, uh, let's say like even if you want to call it like an exercise of some sort Mm -hmm. um what exactly uh, was happening here that you wanted to do sure yeah so i mean you know i'll I'll, um withhold you know certain personal information but i'll just say that like this this image is um it's quite personal to me for a few different reasons um but mainly this is completely staged all right so this is a bowl of oil olive oil and balsamic vinegar right uh on top of a comforter so this was just shot in my apartment and the sunlight coming in through the window um in my old apartment i had a really like nice expansive picture window so i'd get nice light a lot of days and it was coming in particularly nicely and i thought well um you know i kind of just want to put together a still life of some kind but i don't I didn't have a table that was nearby, so it couldn't be a tabletop. And I was like, well, it's falling right on my bed right now. So Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll use that. And so I, you know, I literally just left the comforter how it was when I got out of bed that morning, didn't touch it. So it's got that nice, you know, curvature to it. Um, This was shot after my separation and divorce. So this actually used to be my old bedspread uh, when I was still with my ex-wife. So I, I was... It was the time of my life I hadn't like bought new stuff for myself yet, right? So I was like, okay, this is kind of interesting though to leave that there. It's like a relic from this other chapter of my life. And uh, I was just trying to figure out what could be interesting to put on top of it and juxtapose with it. And um, so I you know, went in the kitchen, poured a little bit of olive oil and vinegar into this bowl and brought it over there and uh, along with a few other objects, right? Like this is kind of the trial and error part of especially something like a contrived still life you're arranging, you're, you're thinking, you know, what's actually interesting. And by the time you, you know, put the camera up to your eye and you see it in the frame, you can kind of decide. So there were several others prior to this that I was like, you know, I'm not even going to take that picture probably because why waste the film? It's not really worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, but this one with the way that the shadow then fell, you know, from the bowl where there's that nice dark area, uh, you know, half moon, crescent moon shape almost behind it, which kind of opposes the, the interior of the bowl which has a little bit of a shadow crescent moon shape on the, you know, the edge where the light is not falling from the window, right? Like all these different elements kind of combined. And I was like, well, there's beautiful tonality. The shapes uh, of the stitching on the bedspread worked well. They're pretty lovely just under themselves. Uh, and it was just, it was just right. You know, it, it kind of eventually, I think I took a few frames of this and this was the best of those. And um, it conveyed what I wanted to say and felt kind of fresh compared to just a, a typical dead standard still life, if you will. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I see. Um, yeah. And it's, uh, uh, the, 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 I mean, the, the colors, uh, are not the colors, the, um, the, the, the tones are pretty good in the sense that, you know, a lot of the patterning ends up matching. Like, I mean, you have the curvatures in the patterning, you have the curvatures here. Mm-hmm. uh so much of the darkness is similar to the level of darkness uh some of the lighter stuff is also kind of contained uh within uh the bowl and you know each is kind of like reflecting one another um so mm-hmm. you know I, I think like you know uh, in, in all those kinds of like te- technical respects like this is a uh a, a w- well done and, and also again like go, going back to the idea of photography being limited by uh reality right in the sense that not all bits of reality are worth capturing right something had to happen here right you you decided discretionary fashion that um we needed an additional element right some kind of bowl or something something right um Mm -hmm. you you needed to play off these shadows like so might as well do it in this way 
Yeah. I always assumed that this was a, a cup of a coffee, but I guess oh, not. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, you could, you could assume that, I suppose. Yeah. D- did you uh, dip any bread into this mixture when you were done? Uh, probably. I love olive oil and good vinegar good. and bread. So I, I probably did. Yeah. <laughs> good, good, good. Um, it didn't so, go to waste. So you, so you have these two that are very uh, close to one another. Yeah, it's a pair. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, I mean, this is a good example of uh, to anyone who is a photographer out there or uh, aspiring photographer, uh, just using your surroundings. I mean, this is literally taken inside my office building. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was I was there at work, I think, one morning and... I kind of realized like, Hey, you know, the way the light's coming in this time of year, um, you know, th- th- it's pretty dark up there. Cause this is, you know, toward the, almost toward the ceiling of the building. So I was like, well, if, if there's anything interesting that happens outside the window, I could probably get that properly exposed and then basically just let everything else go dark. Yeah. And so the next day I brought my camera in, uh, early in the morning when I was getting there at first and, there was this bird on the telephone wires outside. And so I snapped it and then kind of kept the camera to my eye and it flew away, you know, right after. And I was able to luckily snap that too. So it's kind of just a nice diptych yeah. um, of a, a fleeting little moment, but, you know, nice element with the the curved metal bar at the base of the window and the palm tree outside and the cross hairs, you know, uh, in the window itself and so on. Yeah. Uh, this definitely has, um, especially side by side, uh, this definitely has a, uh, uh, legit uh, yeah. quality to it. Right. In the sense that you could imagine like, you know, the, the over voice saying, and there were birds, mm-hmm. live birds, live right? birds. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, you could see that happening. Uh, I just see some other ones, uh, Yeah, I mean, it's, this is like a good little, like, you know, anterior, in, interior. Mm-hmm. Um, right. A, a lot of the, the more kind of like more domestic things, like it's just little, um, uh, like interior quirks. Yeah. Is this a self portrait? Yeah, it is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that, I mean, that was like a triple mirror actually at a urinal. <laughs> in a a restaurant i was at so uh again always have your have your camera with you is that someone next to you or is that so that's my that's my hand that's your hand okay yep so it's yeah i just you know the minute i looked up uh after i finished peeing i saw i was like oh it's like you know it's an infinite reflection type mirror um might be interesting to to take a self-portrait so you know i purposefully kind of try to make close to the center of the photograph this that split of my camera and my hand Mm -hmm. right uh at the corner of those mirrors and then just kind of let it start to fade out uh and and chime you know one to the next to the next until it totally blurs so yeah this is this is subtle right but this is a very nice little frame Mm -hmm. right splitting down and also you know the fact that it's not complete down the middle right i often uh uh prefer these like slightly off kind of kilter yeah. framing devices simply because um you know anything that is so totally like perfectly centered even if i i understand why people have you know inclinations for that kind of stuff but generally speaking it's a lot harder to you know create poetry and ambiguity and this other stuff yeah. um with like perfect you know um per- yeah you have, to, you have to choose quite carefully if you're going to place something dead center yeah yeah um, were there, were, were there any, uh, uh, photos in particular that you, that you would want to, uh, discuss? I mean, let's just go through. Yeah. Um, I mean, I've, I've always, oh, yeah, I've always thought this was good. Which, which one? This oh one. yeah. Yeah. This was, you know, an interior, um, at a friend's apartment, right? So it was just condensation on the window and their laundry rack and, couple plants mm-hmm. on the windowsill. I mean, pretty, pretty basic. You can see the vague outline of the hills beyond. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, um, the slightly just above this, that lamp, right? The lamp, um, 
then this. set against the ivy to the left two left oh this that one yeah you know so like again just to show that you can contrive things and i still think they can work right so this was my backyard and obviously the lamp was from inside the house but I, i'd always thought this lamp was you know it had potential to look interesting if thrown into an odd environment and so uh one day it was you know i just kind of thought well what if i take it and put it against the ivy in the back what would that look like and um so i i just enjoyed the way it framed up and and went for it you know it's got a lot of odd elements to it but um yeah i mean i think this it, it just kind of continuously shows that you can take fresh approaches to to time honored classics like something like a still life or an interior so i you know i called this one an interior i guess technically it was taken outside but mm -hmm. basically just off my deck um but dominated by an interior object correct yeah yeah um, um if you keep scrolling down on this one i mean there's probably a couple others i could call so this, out but this the bottom this yeah it's the bottom um so let's go to um creature scapes you know if if you scroll up and, and go there and then maybe i'll highlight one or two of the exteriors to wrap up but yeah so like this first image there right my hand like holding this this prism and just kind of uh i was holding this in my hand one day and the way that it broke up where my fingers landed um you know when i looked at it i thought it was interesting but then from there you have to make some of these technical choices, right? So instead of doing a sharp photo of it, I thought, well, it might look better or more interesting if I go for that, like, grainy, a little bit more, um, you know, charcoal drawing almost style pictorialist look to it. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, I experimented. I did a few different versions of this shot, but this one came out the best. And um, I think it's just kind of an interesting you know self-portrait of in a way i mean no one would ever know it was my hand i guess unless i tell you that but mm -hmm. um you know i think it's just kind of an interesting concept i i the the plan for me you know going forward just personally is uh, i want to keep delving into conceptual photography more because i think there's a lot to be mined there uh there are quite a few you know great conceptual photographers who you know kind of set up different scenes or put things in weird juxtapositions with each other that it still works um i've never been you know super drawn to like street photography and just going out there and doing you know like your your henry cartier brisson type stuff or even kertesh i mean he he resonates with me quite a bit more but um you know i, I think i can do that kind of work i just to this point i haven't been super drawn to it so um if you exit out of this one quick Um, so like the, you know, there's one of my eye fractalized there, you know, I've always thought that one was kind of interesting. Um, it shows up real small cause it's a super small negative, <clears throat> um, mm -hmm. from a, a tiny little camera that I have, but you know, just an interesting idea again with that prism. Um, yeah, I mean the, the bird sequence, if you scroll down a little bit further, so these these this birds no uh, oh, i mean this, that one's oh yeah this yeah way, but yeah yeah keep scrolling down yeah these branches right so like these silhouetted branches this kind of had that fukase maybe mm -hmm. he was in the back of my mind at the time but i you know just yeah all these crows were up in these trees above uh, in portland where my girlfriend and i were just visiting um and this particular street corner just had like dozens and dozens of crows so i snapped a a series of different compositions of that that uh i thought were all pretty successful this one's actually here in california this is closer to my my house now so the tree is almost more the subject on that one because it's got some beauty to the kind of knotted elements of it but mm -hmm. um yeah this one too right with that the dove basically with all the jagged branch lines i think was was nice framing um so there's all that there and then i mean i've probably shot more landscape than anything to this point um so the in or the exteriors section of the site would have that yeah this was just me in my apartment with some of that tetarenko style ghost thing right yeah um 
not not completely successful by the way i don't actually love that picture and i i have ideas on how to recreate something like that and execute it better but um it's passable <laughs> you know it it works i guess yeah i remember i remember this one yeah yep i remember you've you highlighted that one uh maybe yeah. in like our first ever episode of yeah um, on, fact, yeah. on stage alone mm -hmm. oh look at this oh my goodness where is this from oh i've never seen that before in my life yeah <laughs> yeah it was a buddha statue at the st louis art museum i believe yeah. it was and, and you and uh we haven't been talking about them but i mean you have some pretty good titles uh for your photos right this one is called now you feel how nothing clings to you Right, um, mm -hmm. you know, playing off of some of the kind of you know uh, Buddhist um, kind of you know implications here, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this is a pretty yeah, good that, one. Yeah, that was just recently. It's um, a beach on the East Coast, and just I mean, I, I literally didn't even stop. Uh, to take that picture so i i had yeah. my camera kind of on my hip to the side and i was just walking past those three siblings and you know snapped it walking past them so yeah, yeah. kind of uh, candid yes yeah, it's, it's called tilt tilted beach right it's a good yeah. um yeah you have you have uh you have the horizon line tilted and they're all you know different degrees of uh tilting here and also some you know, some of the kind of like more material tilting, right? With the waves, it, it looks mm -hmm. like, um, you know, if, you, if you're just thinking purely in terms of the lines, right? They kind of, they kind of come up, right? They, they has a, gives texture to the tilt. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The only disappointing thing about that image to me, and I didn't really have any choice on the day, is it was a flat, dull gray sky, completely mm -hmm. clouded. Um, so I would have liked to have had a little bit of cloud interest in the sky but you know you got to play the hand you're dealt so um that's, yeah. that's how it was yeah um yeah that self-portrait there against the window yeah i mean there's plenty there to uh to mm -hmm. look at and then the, yeah the exteriors I, I think a few of my landscape shots are, are probably among my strongest stuff i you know the the star trails there with that tree with the motion blur i mean this is one of my favorite pictures i've ever taken um hopefully it pops up there in a second so to do this uh emotion yeah. like like what what exactly do you do because i mean i've seen this kind of thing before what do you do to make the stars look that mm -hmm. way yeah so this is just a a long long exposure uh, i was out shooting with a friend and you put your camera on a tripod you, you know you try to get your composition right at dusk or before it goes pitch black and you can't see anything uh, and then you wait around and as soon as it gets dark enough you open the shutter and uh, i think this was an hour long exposure so mm -hmm. you know literally the the rotation of the earth <laughs> um you know contributes to the the way that the stars streak across and it was a little bit windy that night so the trees on the upper right there that's why they've got that that slight blur effect to them um mm -hmm. and then yeah this was kind of over a lagoon right so you get the reflection in the water there um yeah 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 um, they're fun to do that they're, they're they're kind of like inevitably beautiful looking pictures mm -hmm. um you just uh the only thing i'm thinking long term is you know you, you can do a series of that right but you you got to find ways to make the compositions fresh and not overuse it maybe um yeah yeah this one this was a good shot yeah i mean this was um it was just these telephone wires it was like a really cold uh i, I say really cold it was a cold California winter morning, meaning it was like 44 degrees outside. Oh, that's beautiful. Um, that's jogging weather. Yeah, just just lovely uh, for, you know, I, I've, I guess I've grown soft now that I've lived here a few years, but no. Um, but yeah, this was like 
almost invisible. Like the, the visibility was really low. It was kind of misting and spitting rain. Um, and these were kind of out in the, the blue haze off the road. And I just pulled over and, and took the shot. So, yeah. Um, there was, I'm not sure if it was uh, in this one, maybe close to the bottom, uh, where you had this kind of, um, you had like some kind of structure, maybe the streetscapes. Mm -hmm. You like this, uh, yeah, th this one, uh, This one was good. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. I remember this. Yeah. One. So this was uh, maybe a little bit Vivian Meyer inspired. It's just using a lot of reflections, right? So I, um, you know, I took the shot into a restaurant that was closed down for the evening. It had rained, right? So, uh, you know, talking about just kind of interesting things and the way light can work. So the street had this nice, you know, blue glow off of the laundry, laundromat across the street. And I was literally just, you know, kind of walking around at night scouting photos and um this popped into my peripheral vision i noticed the reflection on the the restaurant window and since the restaurant was closed there's no one in there it kind of also made it a little eerie and interesting so yeah mm -hmm. just kind of took a minute to frame up and wait for a car to drive by and snap the shot where was the wood that i'm thinking of um oh yeah here yeah, this one flammable gas yeah yeah this is uh this is near where i live in, here in town um there's this business that it's basically like you know a, a gas and and uh fuel supply company so mm -hmm. there's a couple of these like really old presumably still in use i mean it's on their property and uh, i don't know um but they're yeah there's like super weathered giant spheres of propane <laughs> so yeah. And and you titled yeah. this one "Empty Threat," right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Under the assumption uh, that uh, the flammable gas has already been depleted, right? Um, at some point. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, uh, good uh, uh, good photos. Uh, you know, it's always useful to have uh, after discussing all these things, uh, other people's work, right? Well, you know, what exactly are you thinking, right? What what are your values here what, what are your uh, uh points of view right going mm -hmm. into this um this is all i'm sure useful i guess anybody like that's interested in photography right hearing this kind of stuff like i feel like it could um sort of you know uh, uh t t tip them you know like if you imagine like a boundary before people kind of like figure out like what it is like they, they should do yeah. uh like these kinds of comments and conversations uh might tip uh, a few people over into knowing uh, what it is that they must do. And of course, like that doesn't mean um, it, it anyway has to even resemble uh, what you're doing, but just the, everybody needs a thought process. This thought process needs to make sense. Uh, the things that they do needs to be in some way, um, you know, uh, justifiable, like within the framework of the art. 